Right, welcome back to the channel and this week's video comes to you from Palero Golf Club in Madeira. Um, I've got lots of content I'm filming over the next four or five days, but this is very much my what's in the bag of 2022. And you know this thing works, it's what's in the bag right now. There's a few tweaks and changes that still might happen and uh, I will explain as the video progresses as to where I'm at, but there's some interesting changes there and if you've been watching the channel of late, the big question is, did I change those irons or not? Should we start off with the kind of almost boring end of the bag, the putter? I've switched out quite a few in the last couple of years and uh, my putting stroke has not been fantastic. Let's just have a roll here with this one. The greens here at Polero are like lightning. Turn, turn. Oh, that was <laughs> 13 takes later that normally happens. Right, the putter in hand and definitely will be in the bag now is from Ping, it's the Oslo H. Why do I like it and why have I swapped around and finally plumb with this? Well, a plumb neck, first of all, is a good start. I always like that in a putter. It's a mallet style. It's a very simple, straightforward alignment aid. But it's the face insert that I really, really like. It's soft without being too soft. It's got a great feel, very responsive. Sits very nice behind the ball. I'm liking it right now. But as you know, I've had two long in the bag. One of the downsides of club testing is I'm always switching out because I like to have a club in the bag for a while before I pass opinion on it. I'm holding on to me at here, the wind's picked up. But um, that has its downside. But right now, Oslo H, there's so many things I like about it, and it's my putting stroke that is the only thing that needs to improve a little, I think. So that's putter done. What's next? Right, so, okay, so next up it is onto driver, and uh, the head I am putting onto this shaft right now is the Stealth, the Stealth Standard, uh, but a very interesting shaft combination, and probably the best looking head shaft combo I have seen, especially if you're a Liverpool fan. But unfortunately, you can't pick your driver based on the football team you support. But the logic in the shaft is this. You're not seeing a lot of stealth on the channel because I got fit in December for this shaft, this head, and I only got the shaft delivered two days ago. So it's very much split between, this performed really well as a combo. I'll give you more details on the shaft, but it's um, half inch shorter than standard. It's a high launch shaft and the head shaft combination was really, really good, but I've not tried it again since December. So it's either gonna be the Rogue or this Stealth standard product. So what I'm gonna do is very much be testing out here at Polero today and maybe make a decision at the end of the video as to which one of the drivers I think is likely to end up in the bag. Probably won't make that decision just based on today's um, testing, but we'll get very close to a decision. Well, it's just turning around nice, great to get a bit of control and that's also kicking on a bit as well. So a nice first drive of the day, uh, really happy with that. That's the first ball I've hit with this shaft in. Fairly easy, controlled swing and got a little bit of movement on it from right to left. I also hit the Rogue from this same tee yesterday, which you have a little look at now. Um, slightly higher ball flight with the Max on this particular tee shot. And again, managed to get it moving from right to left. So at this point, not a lot to split them. So we're doing a what's in the bag, very much on the move right now. Right, so hidden away under my average golfer head cover is without doubt the hybrid I will be using this year. I've been mega impressed with this club ever since I first tried it. Should you do the big reveal? It is again, it's the Rogue, and um, I was a, just a big, big fan of this. It's the Rogue Max, it's the three. I'll talk about the gap in later on when we get to the irons, but essentially it sort of fits in. It's a kind of, I think it's a club I can play from anything from sort of 180 high floaty shot, and I can really sort of drill it out there at sort of well over 200 as well, to be honest with you. So it's a real versatile club. I've really stressed the emphasis of having hybrids in the bag, and it's something certainly that I will at least have one in the bag this year, uh, but possibly increase that. Let's just chuck this down for a second and again, see if we can get interesting par five this at uh, Polero. Very, very tight for the second shot. And this is the type of, uh, type of shot that you'd want a bit of control with this uh, shorter shaft hybrid. Don't fancy a long iron, don't fancy a three wood with it being so tight up there. And again, that ball just drills down the middle. No great effort in terms of the swing. You can see it kicking on. This hole is all about posi uh, position rather. 
and uh, I just love the control I've got with this. Again, maybe overlay a few shots for you now from yesterday, a bit of a brighter sunny day here at Palero yesterday. But again, hit it a number of times in a number of different positions and uh, in all honesty, it performed pretty much uh, well all throughout. So definitely the three hybrid in the bag. As the season develops, I might end up adding maybe a four or even a five hybrid, depending on where I go with the sort of iron situation that we will get to shortly. Right, so we're into the shorter end of the bag, and again, new product for me, uh, very, very recently tested, so we've had to hold this one back till after the embargo of these things, because right now, they're still not on release. It's from Ping, it's their uh, Glide 4 wedges. I've been really impressed with them, again, tested all day yesterday. Again, my emphasis this last year really has been focusing on clubs for average golfers that make the game a little bit easier, and what they've done with the Glide 4 is make a really good-looking wedge, first of all. Then it feels really good and then they've got a number of different options in terms of the soles, um, width of sole as well and obviously bounce options. And to me, I've really got on with the sort of wider sole. I'd still class this the way I've got this set up and I'll show you the three options in terms of wedges. I'll certainly only carry probably two, uh, but I've gone for those wide sole options again, but you can see they, they look really good. And then when you sat them from above, no great bulk in terms of the top line. So I just think it's, uh, like I said, a really decent looking club at a dress. Looks very much like a player's profile, but there's a bit of meat packed in there. And like I said, still a bit of help if you don't quite get it right. Anyway, we've played this par five from tee to green quite well. So we could do with a wedge. Um, we're not gonna see this one land or how it reacts, but uh, we'll see if we can get one onto the, uh, onto the dance floor, as I like to say. A really good clip. Maybe it's a little bit long. It's got to pulled it a little bit left. No, I think that's good in terms of distance. Pulled it a little bit left maybe, but again, great feeling iron, very easy to launch. They launch very high as well. And just all round, lots of ticks for the uh, Ping Glide 4. So at the moment, carrying three wedges, probably end up with just two of those. So just a little bit of uh, thought, what the thought process is behind the Stealth as opposed to the Rogue Max. I find the Rogue Max really forgiving. But one of the things about the Max is it's still got a little bit of draw bias and it's a bit of an odd shape. This is much more sort of classic shaping in terms of this stealth head. It sits really nice behind the ball. And when I did the initial review, the red face, the carbon wood thing, you know, whether you buy into that or not, that's not of any great interest, even to me when I'm testing the club, to be honest with you. I'm just all interested in performance. But what the red face does, it really squares the ball up. It shows a lot of the face. And when you sat at a dress, I don't know, it's a real decent alignment aid. So that's one of the things, it's the head shape is really appealing when I get the ball at a dress anyway. Let's see, we've got a really tough driving hole here at Palero, probably not driving anyway, but uh, I'm keen to give this a bash wherever I can. Oh, and there's that high launching ball. That has gone for miles. That's a real super drive there. Again, the feel out the carbon wood face, you know, is, um, well, as we've already said in the reviews and plenty of other people have said the same, feels nothing like what you would expect it to. It's that great mix of a sort of soft and responsive, but also feels like it's firing out there. I've got to admit, I'm really confused on the driver front because this uh, shaft arriving two days ago, the shot of it so far, really, really impressed with that combination again. You can see where I'm going with this one, can't you? <laughs> right, so another thing about the wedge I just wanted to go back to, right now I'm carrying uh, 50, 54, 58 in terms of these demo clubs. The 54 and 58 have got the wider sole, but again, I really like the idea and there's still plenty of shaping on that sole as well and allowing that kind of versatility and the way you can play shots. So lots of pluses for these uh, wedges. And I think what's done really well is the fact that, well, I class is a game improvement type wedge, but uh, there's still very playable. Uh, sit down ball. Yeah, that's not too bad. Still allow you to play a whole load of versatility in terms of uh, how confident you're feeling and very much what you'd normally see in a player's wedge, as I like to call them. They're very much uh, packed into this sole, the way this is built. Lots of ticks for these wedges. I think a lot of average golfers are going to really like these, you know. Right, so time for the big reveal on the irons. And the iron you're going to see me hit now is one of the reasons why I've stayed put. 
I've still got the PXT 0311 P irons in the bag for now. And there's a bit of an explanation. The long iron you see me playing is a five iron. We're playing to a howling wind. I've got a bit of control. I've got a bit of help. And I certainly want to maintain that in the long end of the bag. So I'll be certainly playing a player's distance iron in the longer end of the irons. But that's as far as it goes because then into the shorter irons, and I'm thinking from seven onwards into my wedges, I think I'm going to go back and revert to what might be a player's type iron. Right, so the next reveal is at the long end of the bag. So we know where we've got in terms of the Rogue 3 hybrid. Possibly got 210 in it, and then I've got a gap between that and driver. And the club I'm putting in the bag is a 5 wood. The 5 wood, I think, is again a real versatile club for average golfers. This is 18 degrees, is it? Big reveal, 18 degrees. PXG 0311X. There's only one degree difference between this and the Rogue Hybrid. There's a huge amount of difference in terms of carry. Uh, 225-ish maybe. It goes a long, long way, this thing. The reason it's in the bag is probably twofold, really. Main reason being one of the most compact, sort of, I would say, older style head shapes um, in terms of, again, suits my eye really well. If I'm honest with you, the white pattern on the back, I'm not overly keen on. <coughs> Excuse me, I'd have preferred the older styling from PXG, but I'll put up with it in terms of its performance because it feels really good, picks the ball up really easy, in theory. Anyway, let's have a go. We're playing 18 at Polero, super golf hole. This is 250 in, would you believe, but we are downwind uh, and downhill, and we've got some spectacular views there in the backdrop. Right, let's see if we can back that one up, and all those claims I've just said as why this is potentially such a good club. Can he execute on with the camera on? Yeah, that's uh, absolutely just as I've described, which I'm absolutely thrilled with, to be honest with you. Oh my word, that's carried the green. Do you know what? Seriously, that is, well, it's landed, I said carry the green, looks like it's landed short, and I'm gonna film where that's finished because I can't see the foot of the flag, and that isn't too far away. And trust me, we were 252 to the flag. This club is a weapon. Right, well, I'm determined to show you where this one landed. Uh, more of my own, uh, oh, I'm just so thrilled with the shot. 252, we finished pin high. I don't know how we avoided the bunkers back there. We managed to weave one through, really high ball flight. And uh, it did everything as I described. I'm thrilled with that. Anyway, what's the next big reveal in my What's in the Bag 2022? Do you want to know about the irons yet? Right, do you know what? I'm going to leave it right there because we've pretty much gone through the bag. So we had the putter, like I said, I've got possibly two wedges in the bag. In terms of the irons, I'm still looking at going pitching wedge through to five iron being the longest iron in the bag. Then there's a debate whether I'd even drop the five iron into another hybrid, uh, depending on that gap in. I'll throw on screen now what my sort of gap in is from that sort of 58 wedge up to the driver. There's little bits in there that could do with tweaking. I like the idea of always having versatility in the likes of the five um, wood. It's adjustable in terms of its loft, so we can just change those gaps around a little bit. And the big decision really is the driver because it's really thrown me. Like I said, I was pretty much adamant that the Rogue was 100% uh, was the driver I'd be using this year. And when that shaft arrived, it was a complete game changer. And what that goes to show yet again to me is that People talk about the shaft being the engine, and yes, they're right, but I don't think you can necessarily take a shaft that you always use and put it into every driver head. I think there is a combination of driver head and shaft that always works. So I find that totally different to a lot of people suggest when they want to watch head-to-head -head videos, they want the same shaft in each driver head. I don't agree with that one bit. And yet again, I've seen to me such a difference by having this um, shaft in that I gave you the detail on earlier into the stealth head. And that's really thrown up a dilemma. Uh, and at this stage, I must confess, I'd probably be swaying more towards the stealth right now. And I didn't think I'd be saying that a couple of weeks ago. So you've got my what's in the bag pretty much, I think. Like I said, there'll be some changes and tweaks, but that's where we're at right now. The big deal still is the irons. I want to make a change. I'm just not ready to do so yet. There's not that solution out there that I'm quite looking for, I don't think. So we'll stay put for a little while. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm filming lots of content here over in Madeira for the next few days. So keep your eye out on the channel. And uh, well, like I say, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all very soon.